what's up, hackers? I'm Troy with Hacker Warehouse TV, a great show for InfoSec neighbors. And in this episode, we're gonna be spending some time with the legendary hacker and prominent InfoSec community member, Joe Grand, the kingpin himself. We spoke about his three talks at DEF CON 24, the JTagulator, coming updates for the B-Sodomizer, career advice, and more. Have a look. So my name is Joe Grand, and I'm a hardware hacker and uh, electrical engineer. Um, I've basically grown up uh, in the hacker community since I was about seven years old. In 1982, got involved in phone freaking and bulletin board systems um, and the computer side of sort of the hacker world, but then also fell in love with electronics. So I've been designing electronic products, mischievous gadgets I'd bring to school and mess with teachers, um, little hacker things, phone freaking things, and um, somehow was able to sort of turn it into a career where I get to teach people about hardware hacking and design fun projects and fun products that other people can use. I know you were on uh, television for a little while. What was your favorite thing that came out of the Prototype This experience? So the whole thing about Prototype This was, was a very interesting experience to be able to share engineering and kind of the hacker mindset and prototyping with the world and with mainstream audiences that might not know how a product is put together or how a crazy, insane project is built. Um, so I don't know, every, every, every episode we filmed had something unique about it. Um, my favorite part that came out of it, though, is that the, the show was originally targeted, I think, towards like 18 to 39-year-old men or something. But really, the target audience that I ended up getting most comment and emails from were kids. So it really inspired kids, sort of this next generation of hacker and engineer, to watch the show and like get excited about building stuff. So like by far, that was the coolest thing that came out of that show. Um, okay, so this year uh, is sort of a, a special year because I'm doing three talks in one day, which is sort of crazy. Um, the first talk is on a project that I worked on with Zaz called the B-Sodomizer HD. And that is an enhancement of a project that we made and released at DEF CON 16, which was a uh, hardware-based man-in-the-middle device that would plug in between a VGA connection between a desktop or laptop computer and a monitor. Normally, just pass through video like nothing's happening. Um, but you could remotely trigger to switch and intercept the video signal and put up your own fake blue screen of death. So you can, you know, someone would be using their computer, they'd see the B saw and be like, oh, my computer crashed, uh, and then reboot the computer and it would go back to normal mode. So basically, a mischievous device um, that was based on a uh, new microcontroller called the Propeller Processor, which is a really cool eight core kind of hackable processor that later on in future years ended up being designed into DEF CON badges. Um, and so it was a good learning experience for us to make sort of a ridiculous project. Um, Hacker Warehouse is selling a few of those that I had found in my office. Uh, so the Beast Automizer HD is sort of the next generation of that. It's HDMI. Um, it can display 1080p images. While the original Beast Automizer was text only, so it could display text on the screen like the old Beast or the old blue screen as that were. Now it can do graphics. It can do 1080p. Um, currently we have support for one bit per pixel. So black, you know, black or white or whatever colors you want as pixels to display images on the screen. Um, but I'm building in support. Some of the hardware is already done to support 24 bits per pixel. So you do 10, full 1080p, 1920 by 1080 HDMI that you can put up on somebody's monitor or TV. So Windows 10 has uh, their new uh, BSOD has a QR code in it. And one of the demonstrations that we gave at the talk today was uh, a video I had recorded my wife playing with her computer and pretending to get a B-SOD. And um, I gave her a phone and said, when you see the blue screen of death, scan the QR code. So that was all I told her. So we put up the blue screen of death, she scanned the barcode, and the, or the QR code, and that went to a Rickroll. <laughs> and she'd never been Rickrolled, she didn't know the story, but it was really funny and it shows the malicious aspect that you could have. If you put up a blue screen of death, somebody scans the QR code, put them to a malicious website, own their, own their phone or whatever it is, sort of cross-platform um, uh, kind of pwnage, if you will. So the, the Beast Automizer HD really, right now, is a proof of concept. It's a giant circuit board sandwich uh, stacked up of boards. Um, maybe it will turn into a product if there's enough demand. It's a very hard engineering problem. So the talk really was about our experiences learning about how to use um, FPGAs, which are field programmable, field programmable gate arrays, which are basically like blank slates of digital logic, where you can create your own digital system, have whatever you want, your own custom chip. And it's a much different process than working with microcontrollers, which is sort of the standard fare for people to use. So it was the, explaining that process, the failures we had, the troubles, and then 
at least being able to present the community with a handful of logic modules and code that they could use if they want to put into their own projects. So that was like the main thing, and the proof of concept, if that turns into a, pro uh, into a, a formal product, um, that would be cool, but I just haven't promised that because I know it's going to be a lot of work, and I know the, the time and the effort it takes to produce something in a way that is worth selling, right, and that I'm comfortable selling. The other feature of the Peace Automizer HD, which we wanted, um, that we didn't fully integrate yet, is the capability to capture video from the target screen. So since this device is in line, it plugs in HDMI from the target on one side, connects to the monitor or the sink on the other side. Um, it can capture video, it has the capability to cap capture the screen um, without the user knowing. So it sort of siphons off the HDMI signal and can take a screenshot of it. The hardware for that is all designed into my circuit board sandwich. I still need to work a little bit on the code to get that working, but I think that's going to be like the killer app of the project is not the mischievous side, but the pen test side of like being able to go into an office or a building, uh, maybe put this device in line with like the surveillance cameras, and you know take a picture of of like the hallway when it's empty, put that up there so the person thinks it's normal, everything's fine, and then you go run down the hallway and break into the into the bank or whatever it is, uh, sort of like in a hacker movie, right? Like everybody always does that. This is like bring this could bring that to life. So it's it's been a really fun project. Um, and it's totally, totally battery powered, so it sort of sucks power from the HDMI line um, to stay on, and then it will enable a battery when it needs to to power the rest of the system. So you don't have to plug it in or do anything like that. It literally is like a plug in on each side and go. So it's sort of a fun project. That was, that was our talk this morning, kind of just sharing that process. So the second talk of today um, it was something for the DEF CON kids um, crowd, which is now known as Roots Asylum which really is a conference within a conference that's geared towards kids ages 6 to 16 with their parents to learn about the hacker culture, the hacker mindset, how to use you know, the skills that we learn as hackers in a good way um, to teach others and to help society instead of you know, for illegal purposes. So inside of, of Roots Asylum, there's a lock picking area, there's a 3D printing area, there's a software area, there's a soldering area. So all the skills that we as hackers like to learn about and explore. Um, so I came in this year, I've been going uh, almost every year since they started, this is the sixth year, and I came in this time to talk about the uh, CreaturePod project, which is not a hacker-related tool, but the goal of, of the talk today was to inspire the kids to realize that they can, they can build or create anything that comes to mind um, and not you know, be compartmentalized by teachers and don't let their parents say something is impossible, um, because this project is a walkie-talkie system based on a cartoon called Wild Kratts, which, was a, which is a kid's show. Um, and there's two brothers, a biologist and a zoologist, that explore different animals. They talk about animals and they go on adventures. And they turn into cartoons and do crazy stuff. So my kids are really into the Wild Kratts show. And on the show, the brothers wear something called a creature pod, which is like a walkie-talkie that they wear on their wrist. So this is an electronic version of the creature pod. On the front, there's a display. Uh, it's essentially a walkie-talkie, and there's a microphone, and you can choose, uh, push a button to choose which friend you want to talk to. It's pre-programmed with their various friends. Um, the backside has a radio module, um, a uh, little Arduino, microcontroller, battery, and we wanted it to look like a creature pod, but be something that they could use and play with, and they helped me with the entire process um, of designing the board, choosing the parts, uh, programming, testing, soldering, everything. So it was really great for me to be able to spend time with them um, and have something you know, tangible come out of it. You know? And like have them say, Daddy, we want to build a creature pod because they're not limited to the constraints that adults are. Right? Like, adults would think through the process first and be like, ah, it might be too hard. They just wanted to build it. So it was really great to work on that project with them and then share that process at Roots Asylum with other kids and hopefully inspire them to do something like that too. So what inspires you to find vulnerabilities? Um, so really for me, I personally don't really look for individual vulnerabilities anymore. What I like to do is twofold. One of them is to teach people about how to find vulnerabilities. So I teach um, a lot of classes on hardware hacking at Black Hat uh, this past month. Actually, for the past 10, 10 years, I've been teaching a hardware hacking training class there that really starts people, if they have no electronics experience, um, maybe a little bit of security experience. They can come into the class and learn the process of tearing apart a product, looking for vulnerable um, places on a circuit board, whether it's an interface or components 
or uh, you know, gaining clues from the device through silk screen markings and circuit board layout and stuff, and then figure out where vulnerable interfaces or vulnerable areas are that they could attack. So for me now, it's like I've been involved in the community for so long that finding an individual bug is not that exciting, but teaching other people how to do it is awesome. It's like seeing your kids grow up, and it's enabling other people, the next generation, and other people to not only design products better if they're understanding how hackers are looking at their products, but teaching people that are from the hacker side or the assessment side to understand how to, how to work with hardware and defeat security in hardware. Because a lot of people still think that's sort of a voodoo kind of, um, you know, a, a secret thing. If it's hardware, it must be secure, and that's not the case. So being able to teach about that, I think is awesome. And like, I love doing it, and I'll keep doing it for as long as people want me to keep talking. Um, the other aspect is creating tools that make it easier for people to do these hardware hacking things. Um, because coming from a background of doing it all the time, like I've built up a nice lab of equipment that I could use for various things, but a lot of people don't have access to the resources they need, um, say, to remove a part from the circuit board and follow traces to identify where a debug port is, or to figure out which pins of an unpopulated connector are the ones that could be used to attack the system. So, I design tools to simplify those processes and make it easier for non-hardware people to get involved in hardware hacking and just sort of spread that wealth of knowledge because everything's in here and I want it out for everybody else. So the third talk of today at DEF CON is uh, uh, one I'm giving with my friend Joe Fitzpatrick, which is called 101 Ways to Brick Your Hardware. And it's a DC 101 talk, an intro track talk, to basically talk about all the different ways you can mess up when you're hacking hardware. So erasing memory, messing up your circuit board, all sorts of problems that we've encountered um, that we're sharing with everybody else so hopefully they don't have to make the same mistakes. Right on. Cool. Um, so one of the projects that I've designed to help people hack hardware is called the JTagulator. And the JTagulator is um, a device that is sold through Hacker Warehouse and a few other places that helps people discover on-chip debug interfaces on circuit boards. And one of the major problems is when you take a piece of electronics apart, there's a whole bunch of components on the board, there's a lot of connectors and things, and it's hard to narrow down what interfaces are worth exploring. And if you can find an interface like JTAG, which is an industry standard um, interface that's used for programming and debugging and testing, if you can find that interface, that's a major point in. It's sort of an Achilles heel for a lot of systems that you can control the system at that point and single step through code and extract memory if it's a secure system, maybe that's, un, that's decrypting something and put, put it into, puts it into memory, through JTAG you could extract that. So it's a very, very powerful interface. So this tool bridges that gap between finding the interface and figuring out what the pins are, the proper pin connections to use with hardware that will let you do those exploits. So the JTAGulator can connect up to 24 different test points on an unknown circuit board. And it's a command-based interface through USB, so you plug this in your computer and you get a virtual COM port, so you can hook up with a terminal program or screen or PuTTY or whatever. Um, and it gets power through that system, and you type commands and say discover interface, uh, you know, check for pins, and it will try all possible permutations of the pins you've connected to find the correct interface. And if it's there, it's going to tell you, it's going to give you information about the device. It can also detect asynchronous serial ports, which are used for basically like root shell access or serial port access on electronic devices. So it really is a cool kind of discovery tool to get you to that next step. And it's fully open source, um, firmware updatable. I have all sorts of ideas for future stuff, and it's sort of a, a living, breathing project. So what can people do to help you out with that? Um, so really, the, the hardware is done, but I think you know the code is open source. And if people are interested, I have a GitHub page with all the source code. Um, and I have a to-do list. And like I've marked off a few things that I've worked on, but if there's like a particular interface that somebody's working on or curious about, uh, you know, it'd be great to have contributors to the project. That's what the hacker community is all about. Um, I'll, I'll try to get to everything on the list, but if people want to help out, you know, that's the way to do it. Like I've had some contributors to help turn this into a logic analyzer to let you see digital logic signals, ones and zeros on a board, which can be really helpful. Um, so it's almost like if you know if somebody has something to contribute, I'm more than willing to to take it in and merge it. Or if even somebody has a comment, or they find a bug, or um, you know, does something unique and cool with it, like share that stuff, because I think it's all about getting people excited and being able to use tools to hack on stuff. Thanks again to our friend Joe Grant. You can find links to him and his work in the description below. 
If you have any ideas for helping Joe with any of the projects, or want to share any cool applications for the J-Tagulator or v sodomizer that you've seen or done, let us know in the comments. While you're at it, why not give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends and associates. Once again, this is Troy with Hacker Warehouse TV, and until next time, remember, keep it between the laws.